Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Before I get into this video, I just want to say that the views expressed in this video are alleged and in my opinion, okay? As many of you already know, there has been some updates regarding Mel's custody case, even though there has not been a formal announcement from Mel herself stating that she has won the custody battle between her and her disgusting ass ex-husband, many were speculating that she did win full custody of the kids. This is due to a series of posts she made a couple of days ago. Like I said, she didn't come right out and say that she had won but yesterday she did say that she was feeling vindicated and then last night she did a live telling her fans how great she felt and how she was feeling victorious some people automatically you know thought that she indeed won full custody before she did that live i did too okay I thought that as well however i did catch on to what she said in the live about her victory about how her victory may not look like a victory to others. So I got to thinking that maybe she didn't win full custody like everybody was thinking, but Martell didn't either. You know, I was hoping that she had won full custody, but then I'm hearing this morning that Mel's cousin confirmed that the custody agreement is the same, which she was happy about. Um, we know that Mel had ultimately filed for full custody after becoming fed up with Martell's games. And she didn't get full custody, but she considers that a win that the, you know, agreement stays the same because he didn't get full custody either. Honestly, I don't know how the judge didn't see fit to reduce his joint custody to supervised visitation. Okay. But it is what it is. I just feel like anybody with eyes can see what Martel was trying to do. The shit that he was doing wasn't about the kids at all. It was about him trying to regain control over Mel and also get in her pockets. Okay. But anyway, according to Mel's cousin's post, it's looking like neither Mel or Martel, you know, one was awarded for custody and that they both will continue to share the kids having seven days on and seven days off, I guess. Um, I guess that still is a win because the judge didn't order Mel to turn over her babies to the no good trash ass daddy. Okay. Now he can, you know, now he can start with the bullshit and go and look for his motherfucking ass a job because he does not get to use his four beautiful children. Okay. As a motherfucking meal ticket. It's disgusting how, you know, he was looking out for self and didn't give a fuck about how his, you know, this custody suit would affect the kids had they been forced to live with his sorry ass for a time. They probably don't want to be around his ass for the, you know, seven days. So I can imagine, you know, full time being torture. Okay. To those poor kids. Meanwhile, you know, while he thinking about trying to build wealth for himself, Mel was saying how she was going to continue to, you know, build generational wealth for her children and the generations to come. I mean, somebody got to do it because his broke ass ain't. He not thinking about the future. Niggas like him think about the right now. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, right now, he need to get up off his funky ass. Okay. Slide those loafers on and hit the pavement. Because I know he probably ain't got no gas money to be driving nowhere. Go take a walk to his nearest Target or 7-Eleven and ask the asses if he can join a team. Because what he not about to do is lay up on his ass and collect child support from them kids' mama, okay? What he better do is find out if it's too late for Marlene to collect back child support from his daddy and pass it on to his ass now that he grown. This nigga be walking around like somebody owe him something. And that would be the only person that owe him anything, okay? Nor Martell, him and his criminal ass friends will probably stage a slip and fall, okay, at the gas station or Walmart to see if he can come up off that. Now, I know he used to be a teacher, but when I heard that shit, I was like, no way. How the fuck is dumb ass going to teach anybody anything? I was like, oh, he must teach lunch or something. Then somebody got down in the comments one day and said that he was a gym teacher. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, you know, I'm glad didn't nobody give him a core class to teach because those kids was going to be about as dumb as his ass was. But anyway, he better go, you know, back and see if he can get that old thing back. I know he won't, though, because he tried to talk shit about Mel being a teacher. Talking like, you know, teaching was beneath him. Mel done got his ashy ass on that show and this nigga walking around thinking he the Prince of Zamunda. But he more like the menace of Terry Heights. You know, narcs have this superiority complex. You know, they think they're greater than everybody else. If I saw a man walk right in front of me and steal a wheelchair from a woman with one leg, that man will probably still be a better man than Martell. But anyway, y'all, in my opinion, he never intended on dishing out thousands of dollars for a lawyer for that custody suit. 
because he believed that Mel would give in as soon as he filed, in my opinion. He thought that he would scare her into taking his sorry, disgusting ass back, but it didn't work. This is another loss that he can wear up under his belt, but the thing is, he don't wear belts because he suffered from TAC, tight ass clothes. What the fuck he need a belt for when his clothes are damn near glued to his ass? Mel made a post the other day letting her fans know that she and the kids were on vacation. And I immediately thought that, okay, yeah, that's a celebratory vacation. You know, I saw Mel on the go-karts and she was screaming and shit. And I know she was having fun, but I couldn't help but imagine her screaming like that while running down the street trying to get away from Martell had she won full custody of them kids. Then I vision, you know, envision Sugar Mama running up, behind, you know, at the house with one of Tank's baseball bats, then catching up to Martell and whacking him upside his shit before he was able to get a hold to her mama. So it's the heroic efforts for me, okay? Y'all, my imagination is like no other. But anyway, y'all, just to keep up mess because the devil stay busy, Martell just might try to appeal the judgment, in my opinion. I can picture him appealing it, saying that his lawyer had 20-something heart attacks and couldn't make it to court. Like, nigga, 20-something heart attacks will equal 20-something feet in the ground, you fucking liar. And you know damn well you can't afford a lawyer. But just in case you were able to retain one on layaway, ain't nothing wrong with his heart, but it's something wrong with yours, though. Nigga, it's broken because your meal ticket has now been revoked. Hope you got a plan B and a plan C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, and motherfucking Z. You don't get to use mail or the kids no more for a fucking check. I can imagine how stupid he feel right now. He damn sure look it. I saw a video that Destiny posted of her and Martell and that lady Belinda whose house Martell went to in Atlanta calling himself cooking a meal out of his failed cookbook. The lady had the nerve to, you know, he had the nerve to bring the lady on the show multiple times, low key, y'all. Just trifling. She's definitely one of his and uh, Destiny's people. But anyway, Destiny was on live. You know, um, I guess she put the camera on my tail. And you can tell that he didn't want to be on camera. He tried to pull his tight ass baseball cap down further on his head and over his eyes. He was probably embarrassed, okay? He tried to pull that motherfucker over his eyes, but he couldn't because the motherfucker wouldn't move. It was tight as shit. You know what I'm saying? He already ain't got no sense. And that tight ass little rascal hat was going to make sure that it stayed that way. That motherfucking hat was little as shit. It must have been Knox's. But yeah, y'all, when Destiny wouldn't let uh, Martell avoid the cameras, you know, he put on a smile. But you can tell he was just putting on that nigga probably crying on the inside, goofy looking ass. I heard that, you know, they were at a restaurant called True Food Kitchen in Atlanta. I heard that, you know, the dishes there... um, are a bit pricey because they're health inspired. They make inflammatory dishes. Hopefully whatever he ate uninflamed his feet because them bad boys got to be itching, burning and smelling like dead bodies walking around those hot ass fucking ass, whatever he wearing, tap dancing shoes all day with no socks, sometimes in a hundred degree weather with his cuckoo ass. My guess is that, you know, Belinda treated them to a meal she appears to be well off. And as I've stated, I feel like Martell and Destiny only deal with folks who they feel can, you know, they can benefit from. But then again, you know, their group seemed to be really big on faking the funk. But Destiny had the nerve to say that she was hanging with a few real ones. I was like, a few real what? Waitresses? Oh, okay, girl. Because I know, you know, she wasn't calling Martell real. I know she wasn't calling my tail real, Mr. I'm worth $40 million, but can't afford 10000 for my lawyer. No matter who paid for the meal, okay? <clears throat> they were probably trying to cheer my tail old raggedy ass up after his loss in court with his stupid ass. I really wish that, you know, this nigga was like Raven Baxter and could see into the future. If he would have been able to fast forward shit and see that he was going to lose as bad as he has, maybe he would have sat his ass down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? And then I got to thinking about, you know, how his baby mama, I got to thinking about his baby mama because if if he would have lost the joint custody that he had, if she thought that he was treating her bad before, you know, she hadn't seen nothing yet. The worst was going to be yet to come. You better believe that her deciding to have that baby is what he feels ruined his marriage and his finances. So, you know, he was going to blame her if he had lost, you know, the joint custody of the kids. 
Okay. He's not going to look at it as him being responsible at all, even though she can't make a baby by herself. Everything that has taken place, he has allowed it to take place. And because of, you know, the, the, because of the magnitude of the damage that he's done, he may never, okay, not even with one foot in the grave, take accountability for anything. Mel got online, okay, y'all, and thanked um, the ladies that had reached out to her throughout the entire custody battle. She thanked everybody, including the Melameters, her internet cousins and aunties. She said that, you know, <clears throat> she was glad that they stayed. She was, no, she said that she was glad that she stayed in her right mind and didn't let the enemy win, okay? Um, I'm glad too, because that's exactly what he wanted to happen. Martel is indeed the enemy. The other day, I believe Mel said that, you know, yeah, she said the devil don't rest. And Martel is nothing but the devil, in my opinion. Okay? Spends 24 hours thinking of ways to hurt people. That's exactly why he got those fucking bags up under his ass. The nigga probably don't sleep. He is just so fucking stupid. Because even though he's the one that fucked up the marriage, Mel left him with a sweet deal. Joint custody no child support, and the possibility of them being friends later on. He's ruined that, okay? And he has no one to thank but himself, okay, for that. And y'all, I want to take a second to address a pick me who came through the other day and said that we as black women got to stop throwing our black men away. She said that she disagreed with me about Carlos needing to remove the guys from the show because she want to see their growth. It took everything in me not to curse her out then, but I do want to say a few words now. First of all, don't ever include me in no wee shit. You speak for yourself. If you want to be a pick me ass person and wait around for some imaginary growth from a nigga who ain't shown no signs of growth, then you do that. That's your fucking business. But don't bring your ass over here promoting that bullshit over here on my channel. I don't want to see that bullshit down in my comments okay if you or they want us to stop throwing them away then maybe they should stop acting like trash we all know what happens with trash you toss it the fuck out i've seen the men on this show treat their wives like shit it's time for women to stop normalizing waiting around for a broken ass nigga to heal when that's not what the fuck it is he's trying to do these niggas be broken and then they be on a mission to break your ass. If you enjoy niggas inflicting pain on your ass, that's your business. But you take that shit over somewhere else. Over here, I'm trying to normalize not wasting your life away on a motherfucker who ain't worth it. Okay? There are women out there dealing or have dealt with their own broken ass niggas. Do you honestly think that they want to turn on the TV and relive that shit? This is the sixth motherfucking season. Okay? Where is the growth? There should at least be some in progress, right? Wouldn't you think? If it was going to happen, okay? These motherfuckers, as far as I'm concerned, has gotten worse. You know, me personally, I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see the shit. However, I review it, okay? And I do that for my subscribers. And like I've said before, also, I'm working on several projects. So my commentary on these clowns help fund those projects, okay? Um, but I get no joy out of seeing that shit. OK, and I don't find it the least bit entertaining to see black men treat their wives like trash. They bring nothing but bullshit to the show. You got a nigga on there who is actively harassing his ex-wife and was also trying to take her babies away. But you talking about we have to stop throwing these black men away. They're not men. You know what I'm saying? They're grown ass boys who depend on their wives in the same way that they depend on their mamas. OK. They were already thrown away, half raised and shoved into society for somebody's daughter to deal with. If anything, okay, black women have picked their asses up, dusted them the fuck off and tried to love them the best way that they could. But unfortunately, black men don't love black women like black women be loving their asses, okay? But to get back to what Mel was saying, she said that she chose peace and she chose not to engage in anything that could interrupt that. She said that she was protecting her privacy, safety, and was master planning. She said that any woman who is going through anything remotely similar, they know what she's talking about. And they do, in my opinion. When I was going through my shit with my ex, you know, it was like I dropped off the planet. Sometimes you got to, you know, just go through what you're going through with just you and God, okay? and shut everything else out but anyway she encouraged the women to be selfish if they needed to be and to focus on getting through the tough battles 
okay? Because the devil don't get tired and you will need all of your strength. She said that she loved everybody and thanked everybody for their love, support, and prayers um, and those who had been standing in the gap. She thanked her mom, her BFFs, um, hair and makeup artists, her brother, cousins, uh, aunties, everybody that has been there throughout the toughest battle of her life, okay? When I think about this shit, I just get so fucking disgusted because here you have a nigga who done completely destroyed his marriage, broke up the family, and he was acting as if he never did anything. That was one of the reasons I got on YouTube and started doing the reviews on the show because him and Ariane refused to accept any accountability for what they were doing and were acting like they just couldn't see what they were doing wrong. So I figured I'd come and help them see it. This is why I, you know, dog the shit out of trifling ass niggas and the side chicks because of the devastation that they be out here causing. They be literally out here ruining people's lives, including children, okay? And don't be giving one fuck. Not one fuck. I've literally, you know, been watching this nigga destroy his family and then blame his ex-wife for it. And then try to break her down because she no longer wanted to be with his ass. Now that I've also literally watched her battle this nigga and come out on top, I feel like I can retire from this stupid ass show. The way Marceau sat there and treated Tisha in that episode on Saturday, I don't even want to review the fucking episode, okay? He was just so disgusting, but I'm going to review it. Um, I'm just going to take an extra day to get that done. It should be posted sometime tomorrow, maybe later on tonight. I don't know. I'm also going to take a look at Stormy's interview that she did with Carlos King um, the other day and see if I want to give commentary on that. That interview uh, was just about an hour long, I believe. So I'm sure I have something to say about it. And y'all, is it just me or did y'all feel like, you know, I guess just the thought of Mel being done fighting this trifling ass bastard for her babies that she carried. You're happy about it, but at the same time, I guess it's just a tad bit sad to know that the nigga she was married to created life with, you know, the nigga she helped in so many ways would try to destroy her like that. And the only reason he backed down was because his broke ass ain't had no money. So you can't help but to think, what if he did have the money? I guess that's, you know, what kind of makes it sad. He knew that, you know, he was dead ass wrong. And was determined to continue with the bullshit with no regards to what that would have done to the four beautiful children that he claims to care about or their mother. Okay. But no weapon formed against these shall prosper. And that's all I have to say for this video, y'all. I'm going to uh, let a few clips of the show take us out of this one. But just the audio, though, because who trying to get a strike? Not me. All right. So y'all take care. And I'll chat with y'all in the next one. The reality is you don't value, and you did not value me. You did not value our marriage. You did not value our family. You did not value everything that we worked our asses off at such a young age to create. And you know the amount of time that I gave you to get it together. And it's the pain and hurt that you caused. And for you to continue to sleep with what then became an enemy for me, and now you have a baby coming by this same person? That's an out for me. We start going through stuff. I told you what you weren't doing in the marriage. Okay. And then you didn't fulfill that <laughs> And then yeah, I stepped out because you weren't taking care of me. Okay. You pushed me. You got me more involved, doing more with the company, with the community, with everything else. And it was a setup for the okie doke. Man, you, know, you got somebody who can talk to you all the time, who's cooking for you, who's satisfying you sexually. Why don't you take your ass on and be with her? I don't want to. First. Children. Say, I can tell you don't put the children first. No, look at all this don't put the children about. first. What you did was the ultimate betrayal. No. I didn't if tell everybody. If your husband do anything wrong, I don't care if I slept with a thousand people. You don't go out and tell people. We keep that in our household. You should have kept your penis in our household. So is our, is our marriage over first? Yes, it is. Saying, you're you gonna leave me because I'm cheating, but you go, you gonna go for the other people that's cheating on their girl, on their Martel, young face. Why don't Look you call? The fact that you sit here with me in front of my face when you know you the one that this marriage up and you trying to call me a hoe? You ain't. We had something special. You know, I miss the dynamic of being married, and you know, us both being. Um, hands on with our children and raising our kids together and things like that, you know, so I, I miss all of that. 
really just thinking back to, you know, us being in the nice house, my children being happy, right. mm -hmm. running to that bedroom, jumping in the bed saying, Mommy, Daddy. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Right. Right. Those were some special ass moments. So I still, I love the, I love the hell out of you. You know what I'm saying? I do. I wish this never happened. And I wish I never met her at all. 